Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Firebase Stories. My name is Peter, and I'm a developer advocate on the Firebase team. And today I'm here with Harini from Rowi, who is the CEO and co-founder of Rowi. Hey Harini, how's it going? Hey Peter, doing good. Thanks for inviting me to chat. Yeah, it's good to have you on the show. So Harini, um, why don't you give us the elevator pitch of what Rowi is? Yeah, sure. So Rowi is a low-code platform that lets you manage your Firestore data and build cloud functions as easy as using spreadsheets. So we built Rowi because you know we love building apps on Firebase, uh, but then you know only developers have access to the database, and there was a lot of back and forth that was needed to be done between uh, developers and non-technical teams. So we wanted to bring access to the database in a spreadsheet format that everybody's familiar with. So that's why we built Rowi. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I know that um, people are asking us all of the time, why don't you build more features into the Firestore data browser? You know, you can edit data and all of that, but um, you know, people are missing features, and it seems like you're filling this gap, right? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, um, there's, Firebase is great to build on to get quickly set up and get your apps going, but, you know, certain kind of internal tools that, you know, developers don't want to build. Uh, so Roy gives you that instant access to your database in a spreadsheet UI. So that's why we kind of, you know, wanted to avoid people building internal tools over and over again, and, you know, they can leverage Roy. Maybe you can walk us through how it works and, you know, maybe give us um, an understanding of how it looks like. Yeah, sure. So on my screen, you can see that Roy here is connected to one of the projects, but basically you can connect to any number of projects on Roy and you can view your collections like this in a spreadsheet table format. Mm -hmm. uh, we support tons of column and field types. So as you can see, um, you know, multi-select, rating, sliders, images, files, and so on. So we have a support for over 30 fields here. Um, so you can easily add columns. Um, and adding data rows is also as simple as adding rows. Uh, you can filter and sort the data. You can uh, import and export data in bulk. Uh, and also you can invite your team members so that you can collaborate on the data uh, with granular access controls with custom roles for each member of your team. That's pretty cool. So uh, one thing that you showed just there is um, the number of fields that you support. So Firestore supports a number of basic fields. Um, but you support a lot more. And I was wondering how you managed to implement that. Yeah, so you know, at a UI level, we ab abstract away the field type. So for example, this field here, so if you actually go into Firestore, uh, you are able to actually look how it looks like, mm -hmm. which is a basic string element. So uh, we abstract away all the fields at a UI level so that each of these fields are able to map to the eight fields that Firestore supports. Um, and also we are you know, building Roy in open source. So we have all these field types that you can explore the code for. You can also add your own column types if you need something specific. Mm. Um, so that's uh, you know, something we are working on. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I love that you can extend it. Um, can you maybe show us how, uh, let's say, how would a telephone number field or an email field look like? Here, you know, you have this email field. Um, basically, you can also set default values for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can have like validation in regex level. So here, if I go into Firestore, um, you can see here, uh, for example, this email field gets stored as a basic string. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you can do similar stuff for other things as well. So you can think of it like, hey, there is this uh, multi-select column, uh, which is basically maps down to an array of string. So it kind of maps it down to the closest possible field that Firestore supports. Yeah, nice. So another thing that is probably really important when you um, open access to your database to a number of people within your company, um, you'll have um, people from all sorts of different departments. And you want to make sure that not everybody can see your customer's data, for example. Not everybody can modify it. So I think access control is a really important topic. How does Rory support that? Yeah, 100%. So this is something we, you know, was top of our mind when we were building it. You know, opening up access to the database to non-technical team members can be scary. So mm -hmm. we have introduced a custom role-based access. So for example, uh, you can here define which are the roles in your team that needs access to this specific collection. Uh, you can also define your own. Say, suppose, you know, you have marketing team, you can uh, add that. 
And then effectively, you can say whether you need to give them read, write access. So for example, if you want to give these people only read access, you can do so. And here we suggest the specific Firestore rule. So all that you need mm -hmm. to do is copy this over to Firestore uh, console and just paste it. So um, you are able to basically have granular access control at uh, both you know, higher level, collection level, but also like granular uh, field level, whether it's read, write access or view access. So you're able to fully control what it is that who can access. And then you'd have to go into the, the rules file and update the rule. Um, what happens if you, let's say you give uh, read access to the marketing team and then later on you decide, oh, uh, but now we would also give them write access. Um, do you have to find the rule in the rules file and then manually edit that? Yeah, so you'll be able to do that where here you can say, and now you say, okay, now marketing team, I need them to have write access as well. So we suggest the rule and for the collection. So all that you need to do is go to here and then for that collection, just change the rule. Mm -hmm. So it's as simple as, you know, just uh, using Firestore's existing structure. So this kind of allowed us to build like a complex access policies without having to do things from scratch. Yeah, I, I really like it. So it's, it seems very powerful and, you know, easy, uh, easily accessible at the same time. Um, however, I mean, uh, obviously, you, you'll, you still have to know what you're doing there. So, you know, you can, you know, for example, if you if you mess the, the rules files up, then you're, you're probably in trouble. So you need to pay a little bit of attention to, to what you're doing right there. Yeah, exactly. So only developers or admin access uh, can do these changes. So once they actually set up the table and uh, get, get all the rules in place, anyone else who's invited, who's possibly non-technical, they don't have access to change any of these. So mm. they are just interacting it with this as a spreadsheet and making modifications to things that they are allowed to. That's pretty cool. Okay, cool. So let's talk a little bit about how it was actually built. So now we've seen how it looks and feels like from the user's perspective, but we're always interested in taking a look behind the scenes. So I guess because you're um, building this as a tool to augment Firestore, that obviously you use Firestore under the hood, but which other Firebase products do you use? Yeah, so we use a uh, Firebase auth for ROI apps authentication process um, where, you know, users can sign up and start using ROI. Uh, in, apart from Firebase uh, storage, uh, we also use, um, you know, images and files that you upload here. We It gets directly uploaded to Firebase storage. So mm -hmm. in addition to Firestore, we use Firebase storage. Uh, we also use cloud functions heavily, so any database change triggers. So we have two special column types called actions and derivatives, uh, and uh, that kind of helps users build cloud functions, mm -hmm. um, and that kind of gets wrapped up and deployed in the, their own cloud projects. Uh, in that, we also allow users to use Secret Manager. Um, yeah, and we also heavily use the real-time listeners, so to give that collaborative real-time experience, so someone is changing a data in a uh, table here, someone else is also making a change. We are able to build like a real time listener based product with easily uh, without having to do that from scratch as well. I am really curious about the cloud functions part there. You mentioned you've got those two different column types. Um, so I guess this is a part where you go from no code to low code and give users the ability to implement um, pieces of functionality to, you know, build real, um, you know, applications there. Exactly. So here we have a sample demo app. Uh, essentially, you know, some, if someone adds a row and drops in an image, um, mm -hmm. here we can basically use any API or NPM packages. So here we have a derivative column, which is a cloud function column, which basically uses one of the NPM packages to translate this image into an actual text description of what it is. Mm. So as we were talking, this kind of is like a database that's populating itself. Um, so we have another derivative column, which basically then listens to this field text and then uh, uses Google Cloud's text to speech to translate that to an audio file and gets uploaded to Firebase storage. So we, you can basically focus on writing your business logic this way, uh, where if your data point changes, 
something else happens and you're just writing that business logic and we take care of packaging that up and deploying it as a cloud function in your backend in Firebase. Mm. Um, so we have another thing here, which is like a quick action column, which also is similar, but it's more action button based. So similarly, you can run a JavaScript code here on click of a button here. I'm just toggling this on. So you can do pretty much anything with it. And so the, the cloud functions are actually part of my project. So these are not stored anywhere on your servers, but in my project, so I have full ownership of everything I do. Exactly. So all this data that you see is all in your Firebase and uh, you know all the data is on Firestore. All the functions that get created on Rui is also deployed to your Firebase itself. So one thing that's pretty interesting in, in, in this context is environments. So let's assume I have uh, a production environment, of course, and then a development environment and a test environment. Um, does Rowie support migrating stuff from my development environment to test and then to production? Yeah, so that's something you know we constantly have to do ourselves when you know we probably start off building in develop and then move it to testing and then to production. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have this workspaces concept. You can have any number of workspaces, and each of these workspaces can connect to different projects, and you're able to move your data tables and functions once you're ready in development to testing and production and so on. Another thing that I'm wondering is how do you store all those um, uh, specifications about my data model? Um, so you know any any settings that I make for my for my instance will these be stored in some sort of metadata um, files or how do you handle that? All the configuration for your table structure uh, and in your project will be actually stored in your own Firestore collection. Like we have a ROI collection that gets created and it stores everything about your project here. So we don't you know, store any of your data outside of ROI. And how does the installation process work like? Uh, so when I want to use this in, let's say I've got an existing um, uh, Firebase project with an existing Firestore um, setup. Um, I've got a couple of collections in there. Can I um, add Rowi to my existing project? Um, and if yes, how do I do that? Yeah, so you know you can connect to any of your existing projects, or you can mm -hmm. create brand new ones. So all that you need to do is click here. You know you can give your project a name, and effectively Rowi kind of shows you a list of all the projects that you have available. So you can pick any of them and connect to them easily. And once you connect, you are able to then also easily build tables. So for example, I create a new table. This can connect to your existing collection, or you can create a brand new collection right here. Oh, that's great. So I could basically use this to, you know, if I have an application, but I don't want to implement all the data management backend stuff um, to allow my team to, you know, add new data or um, manipulate existing data. Then I could just add Rowi and have an admin interface for basically uh, zero zero work. I, I just need to install it. Exactly. So you can have different workspaces for different user groups. You can connect to different projects. You can also show only sub set of tables that you want. You don't need to show all your collections in the project. So you can basically have full flexibility the way you set it up. That's amazing. So if people want to learn more about Rowi, where should they go? You know, you can get started from Roi from our website. So you can get set up in by just clicking the get started button. Mm -hmm. Because we are building in open source, you can also try out the self-hosted version if you're interested. Uh, but you know, this kind of gives you a guided step-by-step -step instructions from our website to get set up and get started. Uh, we also have a live playground where you are able to explore many number of demo tables and collections we have built. Mm -hmm. uh, you can simply clone them and get started. So that kind of gives you, without even creating an account, an experience of how it is to use Roi. Uh, and yeah, we have a Discord community uh, with Firebase developers and others building with Roi in low code. So we would love to have you there. OK, great. Well, Harini, thanks for coming on the show and taking us behind the scenes and explaining what Rowi is and how it works. Um, that was super exciting. And I think uh, this is a super useful tool for anyone who uses Firestore. Yeah, thanks, Peter, have it, for having me. And that was another episode of Firebase Stories, where we show you how other developers like yourself use Firebase technologies to build amazing applications and toolkits. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one.